Hi folks, welcome to the channel. I'm Steve. We're in Guadalmar, heading towards the end of May. I can't say a hot and sunny Guadalmar, more a bit cool and windy and overcast Guadalmar. This video, we're not in as exotic and windswept a location as the last one, the Bark Island, which was beautiful. But the subject I'm going to cover is this subject where I get more questions than any other topic. I'm always getting asked about rentals, renting property. So I thought I'd put together my top 10, well sort of my top 10, I haven't, I haven't counted them, it could be 9 or 11, right? Put together my top 10 things to consider, things to think about, things to definitely know about long-term rental. And when I say long-term rental, I mean six months up, six months to a year to whatever. Now, I'm taking a nice stroll and I had intended, and this is Molly's walk, finishing the walk, bringing her back and taking a walk up to the castle, my favorite spot. But the weather, since I've come out, I've come out, it felt okay, but it's overcast, it's getting windier, it looks like it's gonna rain. So we're gonna end up in the not so windswept and exotic a location as the living room in my apartment. <laughs> weather, oh, the weather's been so strange. Uh, most people know we had a heat wave on, it was beautiful. But the last week, oh, we've had some awful weather, cold, thunderstorms, all sorts. I was very lucky. I went to Tobarca Island on Sunday. That was the nicest day we've had in over a week. Yesterday wasn't too bad, but today it looks like it's getting bad again. Yeah, it's been awful weather. The apartment beside mine on Sunday, there were a lot of people around the pool and there weren't familiar faces. So assumably there are people who have arrived for a holiday. Uh, I probably thought it was going to be really nice going by Sunday. It'd be awful if you were here to <laughs> on a holiday. You just have to drink. <laughs> right, so I'm going to finish her walk, have a cup of coffee back at the apartment and decide, based on the weather, whether to stay there or take us in the walk with me to the castle. All right, so onward and upward. A few moments later. Start of the rain. Looks like you're going to my living room. <laughs> Right, I'm not going to the castle, but I've been able to compromise. It's too windy for the castle. If I go up to the castle, I'm not going to be able to hear anything. Although the weather has improved a wee bit, but not the living room. I'm being shielded from the wind by the building. So this is better. About three weeks ago, I'd done a video from the castle and it was windy. And I thought, oh, I'll be okay. And it wasn't, so I lost it all. <laughs> right, so. This video is about the things that I think you need to consider when you're thinking about renting in Spain. I suppose this would apply to a lot of other places, but my experience recently has been Spain. Now, I've been here a year. I spent a lot of time trying to arrange an apartment before I got here a year ago and found that approach to be unfruitful. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been looking at rentals in nearby Torvega. Um, which I'll explain why I'm doing that in another video. So I've a fair bit of experience now with renting in Spain and I've done a fair bit of research on the subject. I'm that sort of person. I'm always into detail. I'm looking at stuff and finding out what's best and then sometimes ignoring it, which is typical of, my, of me, <laughs> right? The reason why I found looking at rental properties before you get to Spain is not very helpful. The way that Spanish system is, you need to already be local, already be in the vicinity, so you can arrange immediate appointments because number one, they go really fast. And number two, as soon as it's realized that you're not in the local area, you start getting ignored. Don't phone you back, don't email you back, just the way it is. Likewise, if you try to contact renters or agents through the website's contact links, they don't get back to you, very rarely. One, maybe 15 will get back to you and you with usually bad news. So you're better being here. That might sound risky, but it's not really. You just, you just whenever you come initially, if you're gonna do it that way, just do what I did and book into a cheaper hotel. I ended up doing that for a few nights. And I found that because of the way that they got here, um, I didn't use any of the emails or contacts i phoned i was initially quite worried i thought because i had problems doing it online i thought when i get here this could be a problem it could go on but it wasn't i found 
once I got here and I seen apartments I liked, I phoned them, spoke to somebody, got to look at the apartments right away, and I was into this apartment 48 hours after I started the phone, done contract signed. If you do find a property and you find it through an agent, the agent's gonna charge you usually around one month's rent you're going to pay so that's on top of your deposit on top of your first month's rent whereas if you find a place that's private you're not going to have that fee so that's a very big consideration for some people you know um, i didn't want to waste any money so i found this private and how you tell is whenever you go to the websites they're going to tell you so whenever you get to the contact section it's going to always tell you whether it's private sale or whether it is an agent sale which is really handy if you want to avoid having to make that pay that extra payment the thing about going through an agent is you might look at a property and it not be suitable but they have other properties just make your life a bit easier is that worth four five six hundred euro don't know i didn't pay it here and um, this property is owned by a guy and say private no problem next once you find the right property you're obviously going to have a, a contract agreement a rental agreement the same always read it fully sometimes you'll get excited you find the right place just want to get in you want to make sure it all goes through and you don't take the time to properly read the contract the small print just remember you're in a different country you want to make sure you understand everything that you're getting yourself into that sounded ominous it's not <laughs> it shouldn't be i find rental agreements to be fairly uncomplicated on like mortgages and when you're buying properties and stuff they're pretty straightforward no need for professional help in my in my opinion but read it make sure you're happy with it make sure you understand the terms and conditions including the rent the deposit the length of term or lease um, if you have pets and smoking make sure you've checked everything out now the deposit you'll be asked to pay either one month or two months i was two months here don't really know why but it was two months doesn't matter you are going to get it back at the end providing you haven't caused any damages and that's going to be payable the day that you sign the contract when you sign the contract and you get that back when you leave now that doesn't always guarantee you'll get it back on that day they will do a walk around of the apartment with you sign it off but it just depends on who you're dealing with whether they pay you there and then or you know you have to wait a week or two for it to come into your bank account just the way it is next utilities in spain you're usually responsible for paying all utilities for me here that's electric and water there's no gas find out how you pay it where you pay it it's great here it's very handy to have an office in the ground floor i go in once a month pay me electric once every three months and pay my water very straightforward i just give them cash i do that with my monthly rent here as well so i have no direct debits or anything so very straightforward, very easy if you want. And of course, make sure you know how much you're going to be paying, what the rate is, so they're not charging. Again, that'll be in your contract. Next is the location. Super important. So you need to consider exactly the spot that you're going to live really carefully. You need to make sure it's located. If you're going to work, if it's near work, if you've got kids, you're going to go to school, if it's near school, so that's the obvious things. But also you want to be near shops, you want to be near any services that you may need. You could really like an apartment, and again, just like me, just jump in and not think about it enough and realize, actually, this it's not in the perfect spot. It may be the perfect apartment, but it's not in the perfect spot. If that's the case, don't take it. You wanna make sure it's in a good area, not a rough area. You wanna make sure the apartment's well maintained and the area is well maintained. You know, these things you need to think about. And the truth is, Location for me is way up, number one most important thing to consider. Uh, so I couldn't say everything here in this video, but I've done other videos. In fact, I'll put links underneath this video to the, the, the videos I've done in relation to your location that you should choose. Because I got it wrong when I came to here. I like here, but I, I got it wrong. I made mistakes through jumping in. So yeah, links in the description below if you want to go and have a look at those videos. So yeah, location for me, number one priority. It is where you're gonna live after all. Next, the best apartment deals, they go fastest, they go quickly. So consider everything, but make sure you make your mind up quickly. You could get in the apartment you really like and leave and an hour later it could be gone. So make sure you understand you've got 
you've, you've sort of went through everything that I've talked about in this video, but be prepared there in the end to say, I'll take it. Somebody said to me, if it's the one for you, take it. That's correct. Next, this is for pet owners. Uh, I've found that there's a percentage of apartments let you have pets. A lot of apartments don't. Some of the ones who do let you have pets will ask for a pet security deposit. And for me, that's fair enough. I would pay up without any hesitation. Certainly wouldn't let it make any difference to whether it's going to take you up an apartment or not. You are going to get it back, providing your dogs don't eat the sofa or something. <laughs> Next. Although in my situation, I didn't find this to be a big issue. I may have been lucky at the time, but a potential tenant has to prove that they have the right to be living and renting in Spain. And this may include uh, the relevant visa, a residency permit, and NI number. So just check out what's required before you start the process. I have an Irish pa EU passport, which has made the whole process much simpler, much more straightforward for me. But for non-EU citizens, UK citizens, it's a little bit more complicated, but not too complicated. Nothing that isn't overcomable. Is that a word? I don't know if that's a word. Okay. And of course you can blame Brexit for that. So just make sure you know what, 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 what's going on and what you're at and what you need. And also take into consideration that if you rent privately, the person you're renting from may not be just as fussy as let's say an agent, if that makes sense. When I moved in here that day, I sh did show them my EU, EU passport, uh, but didn't have my NIE number, didn't have residency or anything like that at all. Other things to consider, amenities. You need to consider the amenities that are important to you when you're renting the apartment. Do you want a swim pool? Do you want a gym? Do you want a parking spot? Do you want a covered parking spot? Make sure the orientation of your apartment's exactly what you want. For example, do you want the sun to be on your balcony all day? Or shaded all day? Do you want to be able to see the pool? Because that comes with a price and that's the noise that the people at the pool. So consider all those things. Oh, and what height? I like being up high, higher up, less street noise. So you're staying away from potential annoyance. So just don't be excited and just jump in. Find everything out, find out everything out about the apartment, the area. But once you do make up your mind and you go and view, if you like, take. If you don't like, walk away. Don't compromise. So there you go. Some of the things, wonder was it 10 things about it. Some of the things that are, in my opinion, important to consider, but don't be put off by anything. It's actually quite straightforward and definitely well worth any effort that there is. And as I've said, I'll put links below to any of the videos that I've done that are going to be of use to you with regard to this topic and a few links to websites that you'll find useful to use with regard to renting. And if you are thinking of moving to Spain, do it. It's wonderful. Spain's a great place for this type of living. You're not even, if you're from the UK or anywhere else in Europe, you're not even that far away from home. Just do it. Right? So, hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions for me, anything at all, just use the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, but I'm going to leave it off there. So, if you did enjoy the video, thumbs up would be great. Thumbs up's really, really important for the channel. It'd be great if you give it a thumbs up. Love you to subscribe. Love to hear your comments, but until next time, bye for now.